Ways to strengthen materials. Can paper be strengthened by folding? For this investigation, we will need two sheets of A4 paper. Right, we have two sheets of A4 paper, identical ones. Nothing different about either of them. We're going to put one to the side and we're going to work on this one. So we are going to fold this paper in a certain way to see if it will be stronger than the plain paper. And what we'll do is fold it in a zigzag pattern like we're folding a fan. You can do this yourself at home as well. Make your folds around about one centimeter wide. We have our plain paper and we have our folded paper. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the page over. Look how easy that is. All right, let me try it with our strengthened paper. <laughs> okay, so it's not as easy to fold it. A fair test refers to the materials used in the investigation. We want to know if they were identical, which means the same throughout the investigation. In this case, did we use two identical sheets of paper? Yes, we did. Fair test, check. Result, folding strengthens paper. Here are a few real life examples. Number two, can paper be strengthened by forming hollow pillars? For this investigation we will need three sheets of A4 paper, six identically sized pieces of sticky tape and a pile of books. Our first hollow pillar is going to be a circular shape. So we're just going to hold the paper like this to make that circular shape. And we're going to stick it on each end with a piece of tape. I've used two centimeter pieces of tape to make sure that it's fair in the fair test pillar that we are going to make will be the square shape. So the first thing you're going to do is measure a one centimeter fold on the bottom and fold that across. All right, now we're going to fold on that fold the page in half. Okay, open it fold it in half to the center line and bring this edge to the center line as well and then when we stick it we will have a square pillar. The pillar we're going to test is a triangular shaped pillar so again we fold the bottom into a one centimeter flap. And now we're going to fold the paper into thirds. So we'll get the thirds, all right? And then we will have a triangle. Okay, so we have built our pillars here, square, triangular, and circular pillars. And we are going to test if creating hollow pillars out of paper will strengthen the paper. And we're going to do that by balancing books on top of it. Now here I've got a normal, plain A4 piece of paper. Do you think I'll be able to balance a book on here? I can't even get it to try and stay up straight. No, that definitely didn't work. So let's see if our pillars have made the paper strong enough to hold up books. Let's start with our circular pillar. Right, these books are all about the same size and I'm going to use the same books for each pillar so that we can have a fair test. Let's see what happens. One, two, three, four, five, Six, 
seven, now you can't see, eight, nine, ten books. Do you see the bender starting here? Eleven books, twelve books. Okay, so we got to twelve books with our circular pillar. Tap the square shaped hollow pillar. Remember, these are all just eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Right, we got to eight with our square pillar. Last test, triangular pillar. Let's see how many books we managed to get onto this one. One, two, three, four, five, five. <laughs> Good job, guys. Did we use identical sheets of paper? Yes. Did we use the same amount of tape? Yes. Did we use the same type of books? Yes, we did. Fair test check. Result, hollow pillars strengthen paper. Which pillar shape was strongest? That's right, the circle. The circle shape held up the most number of books. Well done. Examples of pillars in everyday life. Number three, can paper be strengthened by rolling it into tubes or struts? We will need a number of A4 sheets of paper, a dowel stick to roll the paper, and again a number of books to test the strength. We are going to create struts by rolling paper. This is just a dowel stick. You could use a pencil, but a pencil is going to be a little bit short. And we need a number of A4 sheets of paper. Remember, all identical, otherwise we don't have a fair test. So if I take one paper, I'm just going to put my dial stick on the corner and I'm going to roll it tightly, as tightly as I can, the whole way through. To the other side, nice tight rolling. Then I will tape it over here so it doesn't undo itself and remove the dial stick. All right, and then I will measure each of them to have the same length for all of these tubes that I create now. But they're all the same length so that we can do our next experiment. Tubing down to 14 centimeter um, height. And as you can see, we already have two books that are balanced on those tubes. Now, that is four pieces of paper cut down to 14 centimeter tubes. We would never be able to balance two books on a piece of paper like that. So let's see what happens if we add some more. Three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Got as many as we got to with our circular tubing. Let's see what else I can find to put on there. Got another book. Thirteen. Starting to look a bit wobbly. See, I've got a huge big thesaurus here. Huge and big. Alright, let's look at that. That is a lot of books balancing on that tubing. So I think it's safe to say that folding paper and making it into tubing definitely strengthens it. Did we use identical sheets of paper? Yes, we did. Did we use tubes of the same length? Yes, we did. Fair test check. Result, tubing strengthens paper. Here are a few examples that we see of tubing in everyday life. Have a great day.